We're here with Bogdan, Bitcoin Dev for Liquidity and Fi. Bogdan, how are you doing? I'm really good. Happy to be here. Good, good. So we're talking a lot about Liquidium. It's a um, obviously with your instant loans coming out uh, in, in the next week. Uh, everyone's really excited. And I wonder if we could dive deeper into how you guys solve some of the um, tech issues you were facing with the, the original Liquidium product. Um, so walk us through like what were the techn like what were the technical like the product choices that you guys had to solve from a technical standpoint related to Rune's lending. So we built a peer-to-peer -peer lending model that works natively on uh, Bitcoin Layer One. Um, yeah, this basically involves a borrower and a lender coming together and exchanging like some kind of message between them, them agreeing on a loan, and eventually that loan gets broadcasted on chain. And um, the main uh, challenge that we have to like uh, solve here was um, the fact that was there was a lot of friction during this process. So. In terms of programmability on Bitcoin, the options are very, very limited. So it was like really hard to, to simplify this flow and streamline everything. So the solution that we ended up using um, and which worked for us was uh, integrating with ICP. So for us, ICP provides the execution layer that uh, enable us to streamline everything. So if with our original solution, we had like um, yeah, borrowers and lenders having to like constantly chat to each other to like settle on a loan, with ICP, everything becomes uh, way simple because yeah, lenders just uh, provide liquidity um, into an ICP backed system, and then borrowers come in and can instantly tap into that liquidity. Yeah, so a lot of the logic of the, or some of the logic of the contract can live within ICP, and then talk through like some of the technical considerations that were important to you guys before even uh, deciding on this this path forward. Yeah, so um, it was very important for us to have an execution layer that was transparent, decentralized, uh, secure and um, yeah, basically just provide a non-custodial place where people could store their liquidity into. So for us, ICP was the best fit because the technology that they've built was out there for quite some time. And um, yeah, it basically enabled all of the, the mentioned uh, requirements. Yeah, so uh, so some of the logic in a smart contract on ICP. Do you guys use the threshold signing at all? Yeah, so we rely on ICP's uh, threshold signing, and uh, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin logic and the ICP logic kind of go in tandem, because like even though we're building the transactions inside the ICP environment, everything still gets executed on Bitcoin layer one. So we're still a Bitcoin layer one uh, solution. Was that important for you guys in terms of there's no bridging involved in your product? Uh, you're able to kind of accomplish this just still natively on Bitcoin because of the threshold signing. Was that was like, no, I'm assuming bridging was a, a, a non-starter for yeah, you guys. Too. Yeah, so for us, it was very important to keep everything on Bitcoin. So no bridging, no wrap tokens. Yeah. Just just, just decentralized signatures. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Bogdan, great work. You guys are doing phenomenal uh, uh, dev work. And so just keep up the good work. And we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you.